and I assure you, there are easier ways to make money. <laughs> uh, so why do it? Well, a few years ago, my son looked up at me one night and asked me, uh, sorry, it still breaks me up, uh, you know, Daddy, is it really true that they used to fly to the moon when you were a boy? And that shook me, and it still does. It shook me because that's how a dark age begins. A dark age is not just when you as a civilization have forgotten how to do something. It's when you forget that you ever could. Industrial civilization, civilization itself, but especially industrial civilization, is not and can never be sustainable. Industrial civilization requires ever-increasing amounts of energy and ever-increasing amounts of land, ever-increasing amounts of resources of all kinds in order to perpetuate itself, in order to continue to grow, in order to just maintain itself. We found energy resources that have allowed us to escape some of the uh, kinds of limits that previous cultures have had to face much more quickly. We've poured our uh, our wealth into building an infrastructure for daily life that has no future. There is no like clean green path to living at a lifestyle that we're all used to in industrialized nations. This way of life is over. Every civilization is defined by hubris. It's, it's defined by its denial to recognize that it lives in a natural world. As a matter of fact, every civilization in its founding lives elevates itself above nature and claims that it is the controller of the whole world. I have a real problem with a lot of the, quote, solutions, end quote, that are put forward by people because they confuse what is real with what is not real. What they do is they take the industrial economy as a given. How can we save the industrial economy? And, oh, it would be nice if we still have a planet. The public really needs to understand that no combination of alternative uh, of miracle fuels or biodiesel or ethanol or nuclear or sun or solar or use French fried potato oil, no combination of these things is going to allow us to keep a happy motoring society going. We've got a couple of myths on the left that I would really encourage us to get over. The first is that social change happens by moral suasion. It doesn't it happens by force. You can't argue with psychopaths, and you can't argue with fascists, and you can't argue with those, could you stop Ted Bundy by peaceful means? Social movements in North America are locked into this pacifist doctrine that is imposed by the middle class reformists who want to control the movement and dictate how it conducts itself. When we see solutions, all the so-called solutions put forward to global warming, the thing they all have in common is that they take industrial civilization as a given and they take the natural world as, as the dependent variable. It's all about saving civilization and that's entirely backwards. What it should be is we need to do whatever it takes to save life on the planet. Uh, it's been 14 years now since I walked away from a great career at Intel that I was enjoying and that paid very well to work on solving the problem of affordable and reusable and reliable space transportation. And there's a lot of reasons why I did that. But ultimately, for me, it's about avoiding a new dark age. So why should you care about any of this? We have something precious. It goes by many names. Renaissance culture, the Industrial Revolution, Western civilization, liberty, call it what you will. That kind of society depends on creative destruction. It depends upon a willingness to allow new ways of doing business to displace the old. And it also depends on continuously harnessing the creative energy of people who may be outside the system, an Edison or a Tesla or a Wright Brothers. In short, it can't exist for long without freedom. And that, in turn, rests upon a deeper, more fundamental belief, a belief that life is not a zero-sum game. If you believe that life is a zero-sum game, then, to you, it makes sense to defend what you have at all costs, because any change must be for the worst, right? 
it may make sense to you to, if you want something, you should go steal it. Uh, because what difference is there between making it and stealing it if everything is a zero-sum game? I don't believe that for a second. Life is clearly better now than it was when I was younger. And a study of history shows me that as long as civilization has been around, smoothing out the peaks and the valleys, life has been getting better in measurable terms. Life in a state of nature was nasty, brutish, and short. So I believe in progress. It's not a dirty word. And I believe that as a beneficiary of that civilization, it is my duty to add to it, to extend it, to carry it forward. And I believe that if you are a beneficiary of that civilization, it is your duty too. Now the importance of a frontier is not just in the material and energy resources that it gives us. Now they are there. Space is full of them. Everything we consider scarce here is abundant somewhere up there. The energy that it takes to power civilization is flooding through the solar system in quantities we can scarcely imagine unused. While we sit here debating and quivering with concern over whether we may be raising the temperature of the Earth by a fraction of a degree, Mars is sitting there waiting, begging for us to come and raise its temperature just a few degrees and kick it over to a warm, wet world where we can live. And it is no more ambitious and no more crazy for us to consider doing that today than it was for our ancestors to consider throwing railroads across the Sierra Nevada and building huge reservoirs and waterworks to bring water and power to California. And we could not live here today in the numbers that we do without those engineering works, which we have come to regard as natural. But the most important element of a frontier is psychological, because it's hard to sustain that belief in limits, that belief in the zero-sum game, when you can see stretching before you new lands untamed, untapped. I don't think it's an accident that the Industrial Revolution coincided with the Age of Sail. I don't think it's an accident that the United States was founded on the edge of a very sparsely populated, untapped continent. And this time, the lands that we see are truly unpopulated. They're waiting for the gift of life. Space is truly the final frontier. It's final because once we reach it, it's limitless. We aren't going to need another one. But we have to reach it now. We have to reach it while the belief in dynamism and liberty is still with us. The stakes can't be higher than they are right now. We are facing the choice about whether or not we leave the cradle in the nick of time and set ourselves on a course that will extend civilization for tens of thousands of years to come. I can't imagine what that will bring. Or to fail the test and fall into stasis and decline. Don't fall into the trap that so many seem eager to set for you. Don't fall into the trap of believing that we already have all that there is. The future can be better than the past. We can leave a better world or better worlds for our children. You know, there is no way to argue with that, um, <laughs> except with explosives.